Hey guys, Aaron here, coming at you with a full-on knife review. Um, talking about the Kershaw Skyline today. Um, I had originally looked into this knife over a year ago, back when I was um, first looking at getting really what I would consider my first ever EDC knife, which turned out to be the Spyderco Tenacious. I watched Nothing Fancy's uh, Hall of Fame video on it, watched some other videos on it, did some research. Um, I loved the fact that it could be had for, you know, 30 or $40, that it was sold at Walmart, all of that stuff. It seems like everybody really liked it, but I chose to go for the Spyderco. I liked the kind of bigger profile and bigger blade and everything. But I never really um, stopped thinking about the Skyline. I just thought it was such a cool design and such a good... Um, value for a knife that I really um, never really kind of moved past it. So about a year or so ago I bought it for my dad for his birthday because um, he needed a new knife and that way I could get a chance to take a look at it. Everybody won. Um, it is now, that one that he has is now very well used and has served him very very well as well. Um, <laughs> and I um, just recently bought my own. Uh, what this knife has going for it is a couple of things that I'll talk more about as we go, but in brief, it's a flipper design, and it has a liner lock, which is kind of nice. The blade steel is pretty adequate, and I love the blade shape. I think the blade shape is very useful for uh, you know, what you would use this knife for, but um, I'll get more into that as we go. Um, if you go over to my written review on practicallyeveryday.com, I link to a video that Nutton filmed where he talked to the designer of the Skyline, one of Kershaw's in-house guys. It's worth watching, so if you head over there, you can hit the link for that. Sorry, I'm moving the camera a little bit. Um, the Skyline is seven and a quarter inches long from tip to tail. The blade is just shy of three inches, and it is, um, like, almost ten thou thick, um... It's uh, 0 point, or, or 0 0.091 inches thick. So it is a thin blade. I would be very delicate with using the blade there. But um, the knife overall is 4 tenths of an inch thick. Um, it weighs in at 2.5 ounces, so it really weighs nothing. And the handles are made of G10 that measure 0 0.128 inches thick, that the G10 slabs do. And it has a um, steel liner lock there. Uh, the ergonomics of it are really great in my opinion. Um, this forward choil is very functional and you can it'll actually balance, the knife will balance from that point. But um, held in the hand, it's very very comfortable. The upsweep of the handle here really sort of nestles into your fingers and then the downsweep once again locks it into your grip. There's no jimping, I don't think it needs it with this choil, it's just not something I need. Um, the choil is also reinforced by the flipper design, as most flippers are, and uh, overall it's a very comfortable knife to handle. It's small, it doesn't, it, it fills the hand, but it doesn't overwhelm the hand, if you know what I'm saying here. Um, the G10 is grippy, but not to the point where it's going to tear up your pants when you remove the, the knife from your pocket. Um, it's not like cold steel, but it does have a good uh, grip to it. Um, yeah, so... Overall, it's a very comfortable knife to handle, and I think the ergonomics of it are great. Uh, the pocket clip sucks. I hate this pocket clip. Um, uh, Kershaw has used this pocket clip on some of their ZT line, on a couple other of their knives, and I really don't like it, primarily because that much of the knife sticks out of your pocket when it's pocketed. I mean, when I measured this, an inch of the knife sticks out of your pocket. It's too much... I prefer none to a half inch to stick out of your pocket when the knife is pocketed. Um, for a knife this size, there's no excuse to have that much, um, that much showing. I really don't care for that at all. Um, that's just way too much of the knife to be showing. Uh, the deployment and lockup. Um, it is a flipper design knife with thumb stud stop pins. And um, here's something to consider too. Uh, on the knife I bought my father, the uh, flipper was, um, I don't know, the pivot point was a little tight and it would not flip out well. It needed a little bit of a wrist flick to get it out. Uh, I tried to adjust the pivot point. That induced some side-to-side -side blade play that um, would be expected when you loosen the pivot on, on most knives. So um, for dad, he's got to open his knife like that. 
on mine, the detent and the pivot is just so that I can deploy it like I would um, a higher end flipper with just a kind of a, a, um, a button press of the flipper. Not a light switch, but a button press. Flips it out and deploys it pretty reliably. Um, normally, this uh, that would bother me, but on a $40 flipper knife, no sweat. Don't care at all. To be expected, some variation in the production and quality control is to be expected. If you had to wrist flick this knife open, it wouldn't bother me. But um, here's a good view of those thumb stud stop pins. You can see there's a little indentation there on the handle scales where those stop the blade. So there's no internal stop pin. Kind of nice. Kind of cool. But um, in terms of opening the knife with those thumb studs, forget about it. There's no way. Can't overcome the detent. So this is a flipper deployed knife. Uh, another thing to consider is, I mean, we talk about smoothness of flippers in $500 knives, so for a $40 knife, this is a great mechanism and it works well. I, I'm, this is a, a good job for Kershaw in, in designing this. Even with some variation between knives, um, this was done well. Um, the liner lock is great, rock solid, like I said, side to side, up and down. Now, I did, when you loosen the, the pivot point, you can induce side to side blade play. That's expected. That's the way it works. But um, when it's tightened like this, rock solid. You can see it right there, pretty early for a liner lock, and it disengages with ease. It doesn't stick at all. See, there it didn't. Um, so overall, I think the lock is great. Uh, let's see, what else? The blade shape here is a drop point blade, hollow grind, um, and the steel is Sfandik 14C28N. Uh, here's the thing. This blade is really thin. It's less than a tenth of an inch. It's uh, nine hundredths of an inch thick. Um, this knife is going to perform extremely well in slicing food, food prep, opening envelopes, cutting string, doing all of the kind of gentlemanly EDC knife tasks. This is not a combat knife. This is not a construction site knife. This is a, a light use EDC knife. Um, I would not do any sort of prying or twisting or anything like that. Otherwise, you are going to break a chunk off of this blade. The tip gonna break the blade, something along those lines. So um, I would be very careful in what you did uh, torsionally with this knife. Um, but in just normal office work tasks, EDC tasks, food prep and stuff like that, the hollow grind is gonna slice really well. It slices flesh really well too, so you know, be careful. <laughs> um, the Svandic steel, um, the 14, what is it? Uh, 14C28N steel is an interesting steel. It is manufactured by Svandik exclusively for Kershaw and is used in the Skyline as well as a couple other knives, I believe. It is a high chromium steel, over 11%, so you know that it's not going to rust or stain or do anything like that for the most part. Um, chromium also uh, will reduce the wear resistance of a knife, so the edge is not going to hold up amazing. It will hold up pretty well. I mean, it's going to be better than, than most things but it will not hold an edge through hell or high water. The trade-off on that, however, is that it will be relatively easy to sharpen. You can see that I got a pretty good um, bevel on there. It's not a mirror, but it's got a pretty high polish on it. Um, that's maybe 15 minutes of me sharpening with the Wicked Edge. So um, it's extremely sharp the way that I got it. You can just see that it, I mean, it's sticky sharp. So um, that's a fair trade-off. I mean, if you had a higher edge retention steel, it would hold an edge longer, but it would take longer for you to sharpen. So, you know, if you have the uh, the sharp maker or something, this will be a quick knife to just to just um, maintain and keep a good working edge on there. So, there's that. Um, in conclusion, I think the, I think the Skyline is a great um, EDC value knife. Um, I think with some of its competitors in the same price range, the Tenacious and everything, I think it holds its own. Um, especially when you're considering something like a larger size profile like the Tenacious or um, maybe the Rat One, something along those lines. Uh, I think this is a good value. If you want something a little smaller, uh, a little more refined, if you will, I think the Skyline fits that role pretty well. Um, I love flipper design knives. I maintain that a flipper, if done correctly like this one is, um, is one of the best ways to deploy a knife. Uh, it can be as fast as an auto or faster, depending on how well you can get to the auto controls. Um, I think it's fantastic. A couple of knocks. The pocket clip sucks. 
and it's only righty carry. Now I will carry a knife tipped down on my left hand side. I have been running this one as a secondary EDC blade, so I have actually been carrying a tip up on my right side and a, a higher value or a higher you know, cost knife on my left side, usually a custom or something like that. So um, this technically serves as my um, can I borrow a knife knife. Uh, so I'll hand this off to somebody if they need to borrow a blade. But overall, I think it's pretty great. Um, Kershaw offers a number of sprint runs, including a Damascus bladed one. There's an orange handle and satin blade, I believe. Uh, there's the, the the one you'll be able to get from Blade HQ right now is going to be black G10 handles and a satin blade. That's the normal one. And then this one is DLC coated blade and um, flat dark earth or tan handles. And they are still available as of the date of this recording from KershawGuy.com for a couple bucks more than just the regular one would. I love this color um, combo. So it was worth it to me. But, you know, there's a little bit of collectability in, in Skylines if you want to try and get all the models. Blade Forum just released a Forum knife that has blue handles and S30V blade steel. Would kind of love to get my hands on one of those. But I think that's it, guys. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. And uh, um, overall, I think the Skyline is a great knife. It was one of those must-review knives for me, even though everybody's done it and you guys have all seen it before. I just wanted to talk about it because I really like it. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good Monday. And Merry Christmas, too. It's a week from Christmas, so uh, be sure to film bunches of unboxing videos and stuff of all of your Christmas presents. So, thanks a lot, guys. Take